Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to day number three of our prayers for your marriage. And today we're going to be considering a different kind of prayer, a prayer of consecration. This is really what ramps up the power in your prayer. So let's go to the prayers for today. The first one is, Oh Lord, please help me to tap into your wisdom to transform my marriage so that my wife and I can bear more fruit for you. So you can stay, say that after me. Oh Lord, please help me to tap into your wisdom to transform my marriage so that my wife and I can bear more fruit for you. Of course, if you are a wife, you will change that to my husband. Now, there are several scriptures that talks about wisdom it's so important um, and many times we ignore that we ignore scriptures that talk about wisdom it is so important that you know what to do at every point so go back and read ephesians chapter 5 you will see there where it says do not be foolish but rather walk in wisdom walk in wisdom and they, and also talks about walk in light so those two things recognize so verse, let me read let me read verse 15 to you in um, English Standard Version, Ephesians 5, it says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. That's why we are saying, Lord, teach me, help me to tap into your wisdom so that I don't do things foolishly to tap into your wisdom. So that's prayer number one. Prayer number two. Oh Lord, I confess that I have not been fully committed to your calling for my life. I, I confess that. At this point now, I receive mercy and grace to devote my life and marriage completely to you. I receive mercy and grace. Now, you notice that I'm not saying, Lord, please give me mercy or grace. I'm saying I receive. Why? Because the Lord has already given us the freedom to come boldly. Hebrews chapter 4, the last verse. Boldly to the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy, mercy for the time of need. So whenever you're praying, you're just receiving what God has already made available so that you can get the results that God has for you. So you, that's why I say, I first of all, being honest, I confess that I've not been fully committed. If you've been fully committed, then fantastic. Just go ahead and say, I receive grace and mercy to devote my life and marriage completely to you. So prayer number three. Dear Heavenly Father, I present my body to you. Use it for your glory. Live out your life of love through my body. So we, we're moving forward now to pray that prayer into our lives. I present my body to you. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I give you my body. And as you pray this, meditate on the fact what that means. Meditate on the fact because what that means is that you have no right at any point now from now on to claim anything belongs to you. Everything belongs to God because your greatest property, which is your body, now belongs to God. And so walk with that. You know, you may say, oh, my wife cheated on me or my husband cheated on me. My, my wife is always nagging, complaining. Yes, it's true. We don't, we don't imagine or explain away. We don't explain away the pain. We don't explain away the hurt that your spouse has caused you. What we're saying is that in reacting, you're going to react or respond with the understanding that they are not doing that to you. They're doing that to a child of God. They're doing that to a vessel that belongs to God. And you are going to respond not by like you would. You will respond like God would. You would allow God who's in you to respond to whatever they're doing. Next one, verse number four. Dear Heavenly Father, I present my wife's body to you because we are one. And it's so important to understand that um, later on in Ephesians, um, let me just quickly 
read that to you. It says there in verse 22, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. Quickly, I want to say that when this, when you read this, and I read this wrong for many years. Um, when I read this, I thought the husband is the head of the family. No, that's not what this is about. It's not about family. It's about husband and wife. And the scripture here is trying to say the husband is the head. The wife is the rest of the body. And so what's that? What's the aim of that? To say to you, you, are, you need each other. You cannot do without each other. There's no head that can survive without the body. And there's no body that can survive without the head. So recognize that your body belongs to your wife and your wife's body belongs to you. This is why you can pray this prayer and, and say, Lord, I present even my wife's body, my, my right to my wife's body. I present it to you. And of course, the wife to the husband's body, I present it to you because we are one. Use her body for your glory. You're surrendering all of that. And as you surrender, if you're doing it properly, you are tapping into supernatural power and effectiveness in your prayer. All right. Now we go to number five. Dear Holy Spirit, fill my wife and I completely and make us into bless blessings to your church and other people around us. Fill us completely. And uh, you will see that in Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 do not be do not get drunk with wine for this is debauchery but be filled with the spirit why is the holy spirit using this illustration um to explain to us what it means to be filled by the holy spirit it's talking about influence when you are under the influence of alcohol we will know if a person is filled with alcohol we can discern that this guy is drunk. This guy is filled with alcohol. Now, when they are also filled with God, you know. And so here he's saying, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And what do we do then with that prayer? We go ahead and say, oh Lord, oh Lord, fill my wife and I completely with your spirit and make us into blessings because when you have when you presented your body and then you have filled that body with the holy spirit power is available for you now prayer number six dear lord i choose to abide in your words let your word dwell in my life in my life and in the life of my spouse always yes because the scripture says there if you if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask anything you desire, you wish, and it will be done for you. So we're going to pray that prayer. We're praying that prayer. You pray it wherever you are. Lord, I choose to abide in your words. Let your words dwell in my life always. Pray the same for your wife also. Pray the same for your husband. Let your word ab abide. Let me be attentive to your word. Let your truth abide. Let your life fill me completely every moment, every day. Next prayer point number seven. Oh Lord, I surrender my marriage to you. Tune us so that we can bear more fruit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Prune us. So you're, you're not praying for you yourself alone now. Of course, you can start with prune me. Prune me. What does pruning mean? Um, any one of us who knows about um planting agriculture farming you know what it is when you cut off all the excess leaves or excess branches so that the next time that fruits that plant will bear more fruit take note that 
when we're talking about pruning, we're not talking about cutting off negative things. We're also talking about cutting off some positive things that look positive, but they're just not the best. There are areas that you're doing okay, but you're not doing the best that you can. The Holy Spirit will work in you, shift you, change you. And pruning is never enjoyable while you're going through it, but your results is eternal in value. Prayer number eight. Prayer number eight. I receive grace to obey you every day of my life. I receive grace to obey you. Many of us believers, we know what to do, but we just don't do it. So now you tap into grace. Lord, I receive grace to obey you every day of my life. Please let my wife receive the same grace. So we're praying consecration prayer, but we're mixing it with intercessory prayer. But you have the right to pray intercessory prayer for your wife, for your husband, because you are one. So when you pray those prayer points, they, they have power, they have power. Number nine, number nine, dear Lord Jesus, please use our love for one another and our marriage to show to everyone that we are your disciples. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you love one another. We're converting that into a prayer and we're saying, Lord, please use our love. Use the love I have for my wife and the love she has for me and our marriage together to show to everybody around us that we are your disciples and that it's a beautiful thing to be your disciples. And the prayer number 10 is, Oh Lord, use my wife and I as a team of two to make many disciples for you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So important. This is a wrap. Is this wraps up the prayer for today and why this is one of the most important prayers you can pray why because if you know what jesus is doing on the earth what is he doing he is calling people into the kingdom he's restoring the prodigals back to himself and so when we become disciples of christ we have only one task to join our Lord in doing what he's doing. That's why that prayer number 10 is so important. Now, I know you can parrot it, but it doesn't mean you mean it. You want to pray these prayers until you mean them, until they become your prayer. Keep praying these prayer points over and over until they become your lifestyle. All right, so if you've been with me up to this point, you've been blessed by what I've been sharing and you are yet to download the friendship rebuilding cheat sheet then i encourage you to go ahead and do so go ahead and download the friendship rebuilding cheat sheet it's a one page document pdf that i sent to you that helps you to recover and um, um, rebuild friendship with your wife with your husband and it comes along with a video that I've, ex I've explained all the steps that are there so that when you look at the sheet, you can remember the steps, all right? So make sure you go to adisobanjo.com slash friends to download the Friendship Rebuilding Cheat Sheet and it will be a blessing to you. It's free, you don't have to pay for it. And after that, you will get my email and you can ask me any questions that you have any email that I receive, I try my best to respond to them. There are too many sometimes. And so you may not get a response from, from me the same day or the next, but I do always respond to my emails. So until we meet again, continue to um, love like Jesus and make mega impact. Bye for now.